Hello everybody, welcome back to episode 14 of our Feed the Beast Neotech series, and whoa, I'm a little small still, let's fix that. Perfect. This guy here, shrinking device, very useful, pretty easy to craft, just some insulating glass, iron plates, and analog circuit, you can make it very very early on, however without flight they're not the most useful, but what this guy allows us to do is when we shift right click, and you can set the settings here, how big or small you want to go. You can actually go very, very large. But if I go really small here, I'll show you a few more things we've done. You can access in between pipes like so, and you can get around pretty easily, I'd say. So you can access between wires, cables, ME pipes, and everything. So I've gone ahead and set up a bunch more quarries over here just to get all the resources. This guy here, I've set up for titanium drills so that we get iridium and uranium. I also offshooted uranium over here from the silver production because at the moment we, we were avoiding this initially for a long, long time. Over here, we're making soldering alloy. I threw my time torch over here because this guy's not too fast. However, this guy's just exporting lava, which we have infinite of thanks to the quest. And yeah, soldering alloy plus lava gives you 180 per. Instead of using a blast furnace, whether that be an EBF or a steam one, you only get 80 or 90 sorry this with lava which you have infinite of once again is 180 so i highly recommend this just a simple vortex tube to get it to temperature we have a dispenser upgrade in here and it ejects towards this i have a storage bus on it so this will always be at 1024 tin and lead makes silver and alloy so that's very easy this guy here is making invar or was making invar it just offshoots some nickel and iron dust and it makes invar for us and because we're going to need invar and that is not emcable unfortunately however what is emcable is our bronze and electrum i didn't set these up too long ago so they've only made like 160,000 each but yeah bronze and electrum are emcable so we don't have to craft those manually and glass is something we'll need a lot of so i've just set up one of these to do glass three of them do this now i also have a creative tank of argon and nitrogen i'll show you why as well over here i will actually destroy this oh whoops 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 i had that on in break mode not exactly what i want to do where did these steel machine cases come from oh my tank whoops take it off hammer mode when i'm in the base so this guy here where did the brick even go i don't even know anyways this guy here makes diethyl ether it is a combination of propane and oxygen to make acrylic acid and acrylic acid plus ethanol we've already made plenty of makes diethyl ether this plus diesel makes boosted diesel now this is for a quest obviously the boosted diesel if you turned in 1000 of it you get the creative argon tank so that's how we got that one and we will be using boost diesel this entire setup for our large diesel turbines or whatever they're called once we make them for the ev age however for now i'm not using it i'm just using this regular diesel which is made through crude oil and diesel this setup is so much faster i can't actually click on that but it does make so much more diesel this way so our diesel tanks never running out this guy here is to make crowd fluid i made so many advanced upgrades for this guy here oh i'm not small anymore I've been so used to being small. This guy is to make crowd fluid. It is argon and nitrogen in here. So yeah, this guy has plenty of crowd fluid, plenty of energy. But yeah, oh sorry, argon and helium makes crowd fluid. I have three jumbo tanks, a thousand buckets each, and crowd fluid is used for all of the ultimate circuits. You need a lot of this stuff. So you need it for cooling cells and the qubits. Luckily, we have all the crowd fluid necessary now. Also, it's used in the heat exchanger. But yeah, you need to have sediment a thousand of this, get the creative tank of nitrogen. However, the only thing left we have to do is actually the 1664k ME storage drives. So the last thing I did is I just bulk crafted a lot of stuff. And those mainly being all of the circuits. So I have 110,000 silicon plates still left over. However, I've gone ahead and crafted a bunch of these guys. And then we'll just throw that in the storage system. I've also crafted a bunch of RAM just by throwing a bunch of styrene butadine over here with everything necessary and then we've also just done a bunch of the electron wires and all of these stuff but yeah we have plenty of resources now i'm not too worried about the end game part of it obviously each circuit needs 1024 sorry each ultimate circuit needs 1024 analog circuits so at the moment we can make 59 ultimate circuits or sorry quantum circuits and we need 64 for this quest so unfortunately these 59,000 are not going to be enough now i could technically make a bunch more traders and a bunch more villagers make 800 million emc generators for emeralds and just pump them full and get a million that way however that's a little boring so what I want to do is I want to automate circuitry, like the entire process of it today. But the first thing we're going to need for that is Applied Interesting's Auto Crafting, which is really useful. So we're going to make 16 of these. Well, actually, we're probably going to make like 64 of them, let's be honest. But yeah, I'll throw this guy on here, plenty of circuits, and we'll just make a bunch of these. I should be able to fill my inventory with these. 
Yeah, perfect. Oh, is that going to be enough? Yeah, it definitely is. 59, perfect. And that should be the quest. Perfect. And it unlocks all of this, which is super nice. So we have the Watch of Flowing Time, Titanium Drills, and we have Shale Oil infinitely now. Also, 256 teleporting cores. I guess we can make this too. Why not? Finish off the quest line. Ooh, we need Ender Pearls. En masse. Oh, please tell me I have them in here. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. Just 10 more. Oh, it's 256. Wow. Okay, my bad. I need a lot of Ender Pearls for this though. I wish they stacked up to 64 in this pack. Because doing 16 at a time is quite annoying. Quest complete. Nice. And now we just need the quantum circuits. Perfect. I don't know why this is the quest. I'm going to be honest. I don't think unless you're doing like QIO, right? Like unless you're doing QIO and even then this is kind of crazy. I'm not sure why it wants 256 of these guys. This feels very unnecessary. Like it feels like a really random thing. But that's just me. We don't need any of that. We have our tempad, obviously, so we don't need one of those. However, that's that all done. I do want to make a bunch more of these, though. So I'll fill up my inventory again. Eh, you know what? That should be pretty good. And then I can make them all into 256s. 37256, that's not terrible. So, the first thing we need for A2 autocrafting is obviously a computer. Now, I will show you another thing I've done off camera, which I didn't show you earlier for this reason. I've gone ahead and made a separate room down here. Now, I was planning to actually do this for the nuclear craft stuff. Not nuclear craft, but the nuclear automation. However, I have set up our dense energy cells or dense energy cells so that this guy can have actually enough power. Just one in each hole makes it look nice. And since each one of the slots of the controllers use 64 cables, we are doing dense smart cables off the top, which can hold 64 channels each. Super nice. So those just outflowing off the top on each corner, which is obviously super nice, like I said. But yeah, this guy's just up here and we're going to do all of our circuit automation, all of our A2 auto crafting, everything down this room. So obviously I've kind of cluttered up up here pretty much with everything already and obviously there's more expansion room but hiding everything behind the tanks is just it's a little messy and i'm not too big of a fan of it and we're going to need a lot of machines to do full automation for circuit crafting so that's going to be this room down here i do want to go ahead and make some crafting storages so crafting units are digital circuits calculation press arithmetic and ram with molten redstone and yeah, this is another thing we're going to have to automate is transistors. Like we already have the P-doped and n doped silicon plates. I also automated steel plates, which was using mechanism actually. I'll show that off. I had that downstairs. I don't know why I didn't earlier. Just over here in the corner, we have, well, I had iron going in here with coal dust, enriched iron with coal dust again, smelted, make steel. And then I had the steel go up to a compressor up here to make steel plates. Very simple. Just a lot easier than using the electric glass furnace. Probably the best method of making steel, honestly. And that's another reason we wanted so much glass, because all of these guys use glass as well. And I should have plenty of ram and redstone over here. So I will unlock you, turn that off, and chuck all that in there. And we have plenty of molten redstone, by the way, thanks to this fellow over here. I just have him permanently making redstone since I'm not using this EPF anymore. I do technically should be using it for titanium specifically since we have 24k dust, but I figured I would do titanium later and we already have 24,000 of it, so it's not that big of a deal. Also, I'm going ahead and making tungsten. We have 21,000 of it, or sorry, 2100 of it, and that is this recipe where you're making tungsten tiny dust in the compressor which takes 120 seconds, by the way. And this is a terribly long recipe, but then we pack them into tungsten of ingots. And that's because you need this to make mixed blast-proof ingots. And, well, you might think, why don't you just make it with the implosion compressor? Well, the implosion compressor itself needs the blast-proof alloy large plates, as well as a bunch of blast-proof cases. So you need a ton of tungsten. I don't know the exact number, but you need a bunch of tungsten ahead of time. I will say one cool thing I did learn from the Feed the Beast Discord is if you take Modern Industrialization Lubricant and you right click it on a machine, I've made so many of these at this point, let's grab 16, we'll throw it inside of our assembler here. So now the efficiency max is 288 and it's only a 7 of 134. But if I right click a bucket of lubricant on it, it went up to 48, now went to 88, and now went to 128. So it consumes the bucket of lubricant to bring the efficiency all the way up right away, which is, let me say, super, super useful. But yeah, I'll go ahead and let all these craft up, and then we'll go set up some assemblers down below, which then we can start making some of everything, which is really cool. I love auto crafting. But yeah, we're just making a bunch of molecular assemblers and pattern providers. Obviously, if you've done E2 before, this is very stock standard, nothing too complicated here. And I did not make enough cores. Do I have any more flukes dust? I should have. Okay, I have more flukes crystals. 
we're going to have to macerate a bunch of these and make some more cores. But for now, if we head down here, as you see, I've made the 256k crafting storage units. I've made six small CPUs, mainly for auto processing and request terminals. These guys will always be firing. This middle CPU will be for anything I request. So big crafts and anything complicated, I will do through this guy. And I will show you how to set that up once we get there. However, for now, we're going to have all of these guys set to auto crafting, basically one through six. And then we'll specially name this guy differently. However, for now, as you see up here, it's all connected. I've gone ahead and used yellow cables just out this side and then ran all the way through the back and then down and then just through the floor. Very simple setup. And this guy is only using seven of 64 channels as each one of these only uses up one channel, which is super nice. However, once we get to our molecular assembler towers, these guys use one channel per pattern provider or per molecular assembler, one of the two. But yeah, we're going to need a lot of channels for each one of these guys. So for the first one, I will show you how I'm going to set this up. We're going to go three out and we're going to do right here. So we'll do something like so up like this. And we're going to do a simple pattern like this. You've probably seen this in other people's let's plays. This is a very standard way to do this. And you go up eight high like so. And then all of these devices will be online. Very simple. And as you see, they are all added, installed eight, installed eight. And we'll do another one right here. I just realized my game sounds have been off this entire time. But yeah, we're going to do very simple setups like this on both sides. And this should be plenty of enough space for patterns. Now, the reason these are done this way in the cross pattern is this pattern provider, if the recipe is using this guy, it can fire in all three of these molecular assemblers at once. So if I request, say, a thousand steel machine casings, right? And that's where this pattern is. Once this guy has acceleration cards, all of these, obviously, this guy can put the steel machine casings in this molecular assembler, this one, as well as this one. So we can use all three at once. And that goes for every single pattern provider. Each pattern provider has access to three or four molecular assemblers, which is super nice. So we need first a pattern encoding terminal. Then we also need a pattern access terminal. This guy will allow us to access our patterns. I'll move our transmutation tablet and then we'll throw both of these on here. So we'll do pattern encoding and pattern access. First thing we need to do and first thing you should always do is make a pattern recipe. Sorry, well, we have to make a pattern first. But yeah, we'll go ahead and make a pattern. Then we'll make a pattern recipe, encode that, and then we can throw it in any of our molecular assemblers. So they're all accessed through here. Very simple. What you want to do is always go vertically. So you never want to fill horizontally because what this will do is make all of your crafting only in one pattern terminal, which means it can only access three or four molecular assemblers. However, if you go vertically, that means all of your crafts will be in different pattern assemblers the way they work is eight slots this way per one so you always want to go vertically down all the way down to the bottom and then once you get to your 32 patterns you're going to go to the next one so we'll do 32 patterns down and then so on and so forth all the way down until we're finished so I've gone ahead and done a few more patterns, the main ones being the acceleration cards. Now for acceleration cards, you do need Flux crystals and Flux crystals we're going to be automating and something like that works perfectly. So it's just a polarizer getting Certus quartz from my EMC machine just behind the wall here. I'll break it. But yeah, we just have an EMC machine making Certus quartz. It goes in here with Certus quartz gets automatically input. Redstone and other quartz get input in here with water from a sink. And yeah, it makes Flux crystals in this way. I should be able to, if I want, request, let's say acceleration card, let's say I want 40 of them. Now everything's available and it will start making the acceleration cards. And depending on which one's firing, it should be this side, yeah it is. Fill these guys up and as you see it's using all of the subscribers over here. We'll just fill them up with acceleration cards so that these guys crafting much much faster. That's our A2 auto crafting system. I might add more molecular assemblers in the future but for now this is plenty down here. Now obviously what I want to do is automate the circuits. So that means we're going to be automating the analog circuits ourselves. We already have resistors done however we need all the rest of this. We're going to need to automate the electronic circuits which we already have pretty much everything for the diodes and everything here as well yeah we pretty much have everything already set for these guys polyethylene is pretty easy to make stainless steel we'll have to automate that is one thing but other than that we have everything we need to automate these now it's just assembling it all down here we have polyvinyl chloride we have these we have cadmium batteries we have RAM, everything done for RAM. We have everything done for digital circuits. So yeah, I should be able to, in theory, request, I don't know, 1,024 processing units by the end of this episode. And then it should just go ahead and craft it all. 
or I might, I might pass of it. I don't know. I'll pass up a lot of the stuff so that we have, say, a stock of it. And I will use the barrels from this guy here to, say, store 128 stacks of everything. Steel barrels are pretty nice for that. So, yeah, 128 stacks of, say, RAM or 128 stacks, say, of memory management units, right? So it's just automating all of this stuff. However, this is going to require so many so many things mainly we're probably going to skip using assemblers for a lot of this since we're going to be using ae2 for a lot of it and we'll just use crafting cards which are very simple to make that's another thing we're going to have to do if we make ourselves crafting cards these guys are really cheap just electrum plates and yeah we can just automate a lot of it using this so we're going to spend a few hours doing this and then i'll come back to you once it's all set up and done and then we'll go over the explanation of it so very very small progress update we've fully automated analog circuits now these guys are pretty simple we obviously already have resistors automated analog circuits here we're going to set up a pattern for they have crafting upgrades in the back of all of these so we just need to set up a pattern for analog circuits i have capacitors being made in the assembler since you get four per craft in the assembler same with transistors or ductors story you get four per craft instead of just one so we have both these in assemblers to make those and then we're making analog circuits on demand over here i just have emc doing rubber sheets very simple steel rods i'm making lubricant and steel rods oh this is not on a wait this it is there we go it's gonna say and yeah these guys are on gold plates for some reason my crafting is failing miserably but yeah we have copper wires and I'm just doing aluminum barrels. These guys hold 512 stacks. It's pretty good. I don't think I'm going to like use more than that at a single time. But we're going to pass it 512 stacks of analog circuits. And we might go in smaller barrel sizes. However, this is pretty much the setup. So we only need copper wires, gold plates, steel rods, rubber sheets. And that's pretty much it for these guys. Everything else is already have. We already have the resistors, obviously. However, I will need copper fine wires now that I realize. We already have coal dust, obviously. But yeah, I will need to do copper fine wire as an automation. I'll probably do that right above the resistors just for simplicity's sake. And I'll throw paper in an EMC machine as well. Just, I'm basically just making power flowers and EMC storage barrels for anything that has an EMC value. It just makes some stuff a lot easier. But yeah, we'll do paper and I'll do copper fine wire above. But yeah, that is full analog circuit automation. These guys all have storage buses, export upgrades. I'm making lubricant just with our creosote production from upstairs. And yeah, we're just making lubricant that way. Easy peasy. Everything's being automated in here. Super nice. Super easy. That's analog circuits. I'll come back once I am done the next tier of circuits, which I'll also have to do circuit boards for. So that'll be fun. Checking back in here, we've gone ahead and done tin wire, electrum wire, electrum fine wire, and aluminum plates. Now I can go ahead and go into electronic circuits and I can request like, I don't know, probably not 10,000. Yeah, I definitely don't have 10,000 of this. However, we do have everything available to do this. So let's say if I want a thousand, I should be able to automate a thousand. Yep, perfect. We have all the circuits already and we already have a bunch of circuit boards. So let's actually do that. We could do 2000. Can we get away 23, 24? No, we can't. Okay, let's do 2300. So if we do 2300, you'll see everything starts firing over here. We're making redstone batteries, transistors, capacitors, the plates, everything, right? Tiny progress update. I've gone ahead and automated stainless steel entirely, as well as the aluminum wires. However, stainless steel, I've switched this liquid guy over to only do hot stainless steel ingots. And I have two EBFs constantly making hot stainless steel ingots. And the way I'm getting stainless steel dust, very simple. It's simply mixing everything together. So it's manganese, chromium, nickel, and iron. The iron dust comes from the chromium maker, which I've set back up to do redstone, by the way. This guy's 120,000 platinum, by the way. It's taking a very long time to process. But anyways, this guy is making iron dust for us, which also makes us chromium. So that's that. The nickel dust is coming from, obviously, our quarries. Very simple. And then manganese and chromium coming from these two setups here. Now, what I'm doing is I'm just simply using a crafting card over in an export bus behind there. And we should have everything to make a digital circuit in all honesty. So if I take these out, if I want to make a hundred of them, seems pretty good. Oh, you know what? I haven't set up the digital circuit board yet. Yeah, I haven't set up this recipe, but that's pretty simple. I just have to set this up down below. I'll probably do a small barrel. I'll probably only have like thousand of these or something on 
on handle times. Actually, no, 8,000 is probably fine. Yeah, we'll set up 8,000 for these guys as well. Oh, and I was running out of power 24-7, by the way. So I have gone ahead and made a bunch more diesel generators just to put a band-aid on the problem at the moment. So we have, what, extra four, 10, 10 extra generators. And yeah, now we're finally actually storing power in these. As you see, they're actually filling up again. So these guys will slowly start to fill back up. Potentially, eventually, they will fill back up. I'm pretty sure these are still, yeah, these are going to be buffering slowly but surely. And then, yeah, these guys will buffer as well. But yeah, we're doing pretty decent on power now. Obviously, the AE system uses a lot of power. So once we get that creative energy cell, we'll be able to mitigate a lot of our power issues. However, we do need 64 quantum circuits to do that, which is crazy. However, I just need to set up digital circuits to have a thousand of them on auto craft at all times. And then we'll move on to this, which we have everything for. We have the platinum, we have the annealed copper already automated, we have cadmium, we have all of this done. So yeah, it'll just be two assemblers to do digital circuit boards and processing units. And then that's it. That is literally it because these guys don't need an assembly to be made. So we just need a recipe for those guys, a recipe for these two, and we need to set up a chemical reactor ramp, which is pretty simple. We have aluminum, we have antimony. I have so many silicon wafers. I'm not going to worry about setting up an EBF for those just quite yet. I'm pretty sure we're going to be quite fine on this end. We have styrene butadine and we have argon. So yeah, this is all going to be really easy. So we're almost done here. The biggest part, unironically, was setting up the analog circuit automation but that does give us copper wires plates gold and all of that which is super nice but yeah the next thing we have to do is just simply two assemblers and a chemical reactor and we should honestly be good to go and have processing units or process yeah processing units on auto craft or like on stock just with a few simple machines and you know using up some fluids up above but yeah we'll be back once that's all done all right moment of truth i've just gone ahead and made the processing unit like pattern i've taken all the processing units out of my thing i'm actually gonna take these out as well actually no those are being crafted what am i doing but yeah we're gonna try to make let's say 10 what are we missing we're missing ram well i do have a bunch of extra ram over here so we'll just set a small buffer in my barrel down below because yeah this guy has not produced any ram yet oh you know why it's because this guy isn't to point downwards like so there we go now this should all be working perfect so yeah this guy's making ram you're making digital circuit boards and you're making processing unit boards now eventually my system's going to run out of platinum entirely because we only have 22,000 platinum and yeah we're making platinum plates fine wires and obviously making them into processing unit boards however by all means this should be fully automated and I should be able to make processing unit boards so we need a thousand and twenty 24, by the way, we need 1,024 processing unit boards to make the 64 circuits, right? Because you need, wait, no, 256. I almost made way too many because yeah, you need four per, so we need 256 process units to make 64 quantum circuits. Now, obviously, we're missing the digital circuits, emerald plates, and processing unit boards. Emerald plates is bizarre. I definitely thought I made emerald plates. They should be somewhere. Hmm. I feel like I made them. Maybe they got dis like they disappeared somewhere. Interesting. Okay. Well, I will take the titanium plates because those will be used in the future. But yeah, I definitely thought I made uh, emerald plates. I guess not. So we'll just have to wait for this guy to catch up down here. However, it will slowly make its way up. But yeah, we have a full setup to make processing unit boards on demand now. And that should allow us to get to quantum circuits so, so much easier. Now, obviously, I didn't need to do all of the soldering alloys and making microcrafts for every tin rotor and annealed copper motor and every single motor motor there is in existence obviously i didn't do that and that is mainly because i think it'd be a giant waste of time at the moment i will do it as i see fit i don't think i'm going to need that many overall obviously it's useful for motors and stuff because once we get here we're going to have to automate what is it yeah we're gonna have to automate robot arms large motors yeah, motors and arm. But these are all stuff we already have. We already have steel rods. We'll just have to automate magnetic steel rods. And then the motors themselves are the big one. Wait, no, not the motors. The robot arm. These guys. Yeah, because they require the pistons, which is steel gears, which is the solder and alloy, as well as analog circuits. No, everything there is pretty simple. I guess it's pumps that I'm really concerned about. Yeah, it would be pumps. But I don't think there's going to be much use for automating pumps, in all honesty, that I can see... 
I'm just going to look. Centrifuge, chemical reactor, all of these guys. Yeah, I guess that's pretty useful. To make more diesel generators would be nice. Upgrades. Yeah, no, you know what? So we're definitely going to upgrade or so you automate the tin rotors and all that. Just so we can automate making upgrades and stuff. As well as titanium rotors and everything. Because, yeah, we'll need all of this. Yeah, each process, each advanced motor needs a processing unit so these are expensive and then you need these to make the large diesel generator quantum barrels highly advanced upgrades yeah there's a few things we're going to need them for small heat exchangers are a big one yeah so stainless steel is going to be used a lot for the heat exchangers to say the least so it'll be something we'll definitely have to automate however all that said and done we have a full automation which is crazy by the way for processing unit boards or processing units and I can request them on demand now. So if I want to craft 10 of them, I can go ahead and craft 10 of them. Instant. 10, 12, instantly processed. But nevertheless, obviously the next thing in our request book is doing nuclear alloys. Which means we need to set up the implosion compressor next episode. Get industrial TNT online, which is very simple. It's just nitrogen, sand and flint, and toluene. We have toluene from our reactor. We have infinite nitrogen. And then sand and flint, also EMCable. So that's going to be very easy to get that done. I will need the implosion compressor, which... Which now that we can make thanks to having tungsten on demand which i will have a lot more by next episode as well and then yeah we're just going to be making the nuclear reactor with a bunch of highly advanced machines so i'm going to make a bunch more chromium plates as well now i'm not entirely sure how this video will turn out however i do appreciate you guys for watching and sticking around with me for the series i know i've had a bit of delay in between episodes but i really do appreciate all the support you guys still show even when i am late on episodes hopefully we have this pack completed within two to three more episodes max i have to do the nuclear reactor we're probably going to zip through quantum age pretty fast and we should have our full suit of quantum armor as well as a replicator within the next three episodes i'm hoping fingers crossed if the pack does go past into july it's not the biggest of deals or sorry into august it's not the biggest of deal however i do really want to get ahead and start our gtnh series however i'm not going to abandon this pack i will see it out through the end because we're so close now Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I'm pretty sure it was a little mix up of weird things, but I hope it was still informative nevertheless. If you do have any questions for me or if any tips for me, leave in the comments below. I do appreciate and read them all. If you guys did enjoy the video, leave a like. And if you don't want to miss any future uploads or anything else I do, hit that subscribe button. It means a lot. Thank you guys once again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.